Hey, what's up? It's Caleb with Curious Refuge. Let's get into our AI film news of the week. This week, Jasper Tweets tweeted out this new tip inside of Midjourney that if you need a subject to be behind a window, basically just prompt in walking into a window. I did the same thing this week where I basically prompted this scene of a woman walking into glass and it gave me this result here which looks pretty darn good and so naturally i took it over into runway animated it deflickered it and the result was this footage which looks pretty good obviously uh, she's not interacting with the uh, reflections quite in a natural way but for a pre-visualization idea of what we want it to look like it looks pretty darn good this week runway announced two key features the first is the ability to upload an image, prompt it with changes, and get a result that actually uses that image as the final video. So this is different than before whenever you just upload the image, hit render, and get something random. Now you can actually add in directorial controls, which is really sweet. The second is the ability to actually go in and adjust the actual amount of movement inside of your video. So now you have a slider on a scale of 1 to 10 that you can add in more or less movement. We did an experiment of an old project that used the default 5 setting with the new feature that we just cranked all the way up to 10 and the movement was much more dramatic. So this is really great for fine tuning those film results. The director of the movie The Creator, Gareth Edwards, basically came out this week and said that he believes that his film actually took place too far in the future because so many of the new innovations coming out in artificial intelligence have been playing out over the last few months. And so a lot of the themes inside of the film actually are the present reality that we're living in today. Now, I don't know if this feature came out this last week, but there's a really interesting innovation inside Eleven Labs that I want to show you. So whenever you are inside of Eleven Labs and you are trying to basically adjust your voice settings whenever you are inside of this multilingual version 2 model which is the most advanced model that they have currently basically you can go into the voice settings here and we have the stability slider like we've always had and the clarity slider but now you have a style exaggeration slider and so it just gives you more customization over the final voice that you get from the tool and I should also note that whenever you go over to the voice library, there are a ton of new voices that you can test out that are really, really good. And they also have these filters now that allow you to go in and select the type of use case that you have for the voice. It's incredibly helpful. A few researchers from the University of Maryland put together a new tool that essentially is an updated lip diffusion model that basically allows for lips to simulate like they're talking so that you can change the audio and basically just get some really realistic results uh, from lip dubbing. Now, the reason why this is going to be huge is because currently when you watch a movie, like let's say it's dubbed in a foreign language, the lips don't match. But going forward, this technology may be used to allow the actors to actually speak not only natively in their own tongue, but using a foreign language, but also to have the lips match exactly. So it's an incredibly interesting tool and it may have some very practical applications for the film industry. A judge ruled that AI art is not actually copyrightable. There's an interesting clause in here that I want to read out. They say that an AI art can't be copyrightable unless the artist can basically say that humans selected or arranged it in a sufficiently creative way that resulted in work constituting an original work of authorship. So the big takeaway for me from this news is we still don't exactly know where the copyright in artificial intelligence generated art ends and begins. In many cases, if you've worked with these tools, you know that it takes a ton of time and effort to create something interesting. So going forward, as we start dealing with copyright claims, does it require you to spend a significant amount of time editing it together? Do you have to make significant changes to the art using rotoscoping versus compositing? Who the heck knows? I think only time will tell. So Google announced that this fall they will be releasing their Gemini AI model. Essentially, this is supposed to be the most advanced AI model in the world, and it's supposed to give ChatGPT a serious run for its money. But it's very interesting because Google put this together. They essentially consolidated a ton of their departments 
and went into straight up code red to try to get these AI tools out there because they saw the writing on the wall. From projections in the industry, it looks like by the year 2032, AI is going to be a $1.3 trillion industry. So Google is definitely wanting to take a stake in that. A few weeks ago, Seagraph was out here in LA and I had a chance to go down to the conference and talk to a few VFX artists about the use of AI inside of their work. It was really interesting to see the mixed emotions that VFX artists have towards the tool. Some people are super excited for AI, others are more hesitant. But what was really interesting is TechCrunch sent a reporter to the event to specifically ask artists about their use of AI inside of their projects. And the truth is AI is being used all over the VFX industry to help artists save time. So it seems like at least in the VFX world, the AI revolution is being viewed more with positivity as opposed to fear. Nvidia announced with the AI boom that in Q2 of 2023, they brought in over $6 billion in straight up profit. So obviously AI is not going anywhere and with Nvidia's innovations, they're more than likely going to continue to bring in Bang. Vimeo is hosting their annual Outside the Frame online event and they were kind enough to ask me and Shelby to speak at the event about artificial intelligence and some practical ways that you can use AI to enhance your creativity. So if you're around on September 26th, we'd love for you to tune in. The event is 100% free and they have a ton of other really incredible speakers that are going to be presenting on various topics from marketing to filmmaking. And now it's time to take a look at our AI films of the week. So I wanna kick things off with this project from Sharp Delusion and Julian Zenier, who basically put together this AI music video film that really creatively uses light and shadow to create this really interesting vintage -y tone. It kind of reminds me of something that the EDM band Odessa would put together for a project, it's really interesting. Corridor Digital is at it again and they launched the second version of their Rock, Paper, Scissors anime project. So if you don't know about these videos, essentially they use AI to convert live action footage into an anime style and the result is absolutely breathtaking. It's incredible and a really a masterclass in creativity. The film is over 16 minutes long and every frame is truly breathtaking. So make sure you check it out. I came across this project from Jeff Synthesized where he basically put together a short film that is in the style of Pixar and it's one of the best examples of AI animated storytelling that I've seen. It has a really good sound design and it has lip tracking and just all of the interesting AI applications that you would hope to see from a project like this. It really is heartfelt and I recommend checking it out. This week's AI student project from our filmmaking course is this fun spec ad created for Old Spice by Elaine Chai. Essentially, it stars Ryan Gosling as this kind of Barbie-inspired Old Spice commercial. It does a really good job at blending AI artwork with keyframe-driven animation, and the result is just really funny. And Elaine, you did a fantastic job. Our quick tip of the week is to use the word pop art with minimalism if you want to get a really cool retro style pop art look. So I actually put together this project here where we have a chihuahua wearing a hat as pop art and then I reinforced it with pop art and then minimalism. The result is this image of a chihuahua that basically looks like my dog Chester wearing a cowboy hat, which is adorable. And I essentially took that into runway, up it, and the result is this really funny pop art uh, video of basically an animated blue chihuahua, which I think is just fantastic. And in our final piece of news today, researchers have actually used AI to scan through tens of thousands of images to track wildlife so they can keep tabs on endangered species. It's just one of the ways in which AI is helping us to create a brighter tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching this week's news. If you like this video, be sure to let us know in the comments like and subscribe and of course when you're ready to learn ai filmmaking for yourself be sure to check out our course at curiousrefuge.com we'll see you next time